Monday, February 27, and today I want to talk about the democratic country, the only democratic country in their region of the world, and that's the Middle East, and that's Israel that I want to talk about this morning. This new right-wing government that took five elections in a period of two years to create it, and it brought back into power Benjamin Netanyahu. And it's a sad thing that this is going on in Israel, because Israel should be a shining example in that region of the world, and in the rest of the world too. But they have all and behind the time. This orthodox right-wing government is destroying, or attempting to destroy the country. This has caused hundreds of thousands of people in Israel to protest, it seems like, every Saturday night, right? Thousands on Saturday protested the far-right government's plans to overhaul the legal system. Three days after Parliament advanced a bill that would enable lawmakers to overturn a Supreme Court decision with a simple majority. That's madness. It's madness to allow a group of politicians to have anything remotely resembling power over a court system. Doesn't the government, the right-wing government, realize that politicians have their own interests at stake? They do not have the interests of the people at stake, for the most part. They're political animals. Their service is to their party, not to the law, not to what's right. Then they could not come to a reasonably good decision about anything that a Supreme Court rules. So the Supreme Court override bill has approval in a preliminary vote in the Knesset. And it's the latest step by Benjamin Nahu's ruling coalition toward creating this judicial overhaul that will ruin Israel's democratic system. So Netanyahu and his government are upset because they believe that the court has unchecked powers and they had that they have had unchecked powers for years and years and years. So now, he wants to put a group of idiots in charge, and that they will check the powers of the court, and have their own unchecked powers. Is that what a democratic system is all about? Where you have checks and balances, but now Netanyahu's group is reducing the balances? creating an imbalance by allowing a group of politicians to overturn court decisions? What's the point of having a court? Why don't they go directly to the politicians to solve these issues? If you're going to ruin the court system, you might as well ruin everything, which is what they are attempting to do. So the good thing about all of this is that for eight weeks, the public, the Israeli citizens have been protesting And this protest has gained momentum. And large sectors of Israeli society and businesses are joining these protesters. This is not just a small group of right, of left-wing protesters. This is a group of people who want this country to remain democratic. And they protested on the streets of Tel Aviv and along numerous small sections of the town and sections of other cities across the country. This is not one little local demonstration. This is a demonstration across the entire nation of Israel. And this turmoil is not good for the rest of the world looking on. It certainly gives ammunition to the anti-Semites who will start leading, you know, they will start using this in their propaganda. 
Look, Israel wants to become a dictatorship. Is that what Netanyahu and his group want to show people? Israel has a tough enough time existing in this world. No matter how much good they do, they are still looked down upon. And their neighbors want to get rid of them entirely. So is this transformation of the Israeli government going to help their image in the rest of the world? No, because it doesn't even matter what Israel does. Their goodness is never really appreciated except at the moment that it happens. Soon as they leave the scene of the accident or the scene of a terrible event, they are forgotten and anti-Semitism rises to the surface constantly. So to me, this override bill is just giving ammunition to those who hate the Jews. This is not very smart. It's not very good. But of course, I don't believe that Netanyahu and this political hard right-wing organization that has brought him back into power recognizes that. They're in it for their own selves, for what they believe in. Their staunch orthodoxy, perhaps. Whatever it is that they believe in, they don't realize They are ruining the image of a great country. A great country that has accomplished much in its short life. And now they want to drag themselves down into the pits of hell. Why? Why? What has their Supreme Court ruled that the right wing is so upset about? They certainly haven't done a bad job. I don't believe it. I think it's a disgrace what's going on in Israel right now. And obviously, the majority of the population in Israel thinks it's a disgrace also. So I leave you with that this morning. A great country on the verge of ruin because it took them five elections to bring back somebody who didn't deserve to be elected in the first place. And let us not forget that this battle with the court system is a personal battle for Netanyahu because he is under fire for illegal activities. And maybe in the back of his mind is that if he can get the court system adjusted, he will not face the penalties for the criminal activities that he perpetrated. So I leave you with all of that this morning. A terrible situation in the Middle East, and I see no easy way out except for another election, and that would be the sixth election in three years. Have a great day. Bye.